G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam and for today's video I'll be taking you through how to do the SSJS do while loop function allowing you to create dynamic loops inside of your SSJS activities, cloud pages and emails. So the while loop in JavaScript is really similar to the for loop. While the for loop specifies a number of times to iterate through your loop, specifically and upfront, the while loop will iterate through that code until a certain condition is met. Now again, for a for loop, that is meeting a certain number or a count. A while loop looks for a true condition based on an expression. This is really versatile because it means you can loop through an object before you know how many times something could happen. So having a look on the JavaScript documentation on W3Schools, we can see for ourselves what that looks like. So the while loop can be used as a condition up front with an execution block. My preference though is the do while variant, allowing you to specify a do function. This is the code to be iterated through while a condition is true. And the way this works, you can see from the example here. It's going to run this do function and then test the while condition. If it fails, or if it's still true, sorry, it returns back to the top and re-executes and then checks again. And while it's still true, it continues to iterate through this function until this function is no longer true and then it escapes the while loop and continues with the rest of the code. So let's take this code and jump into Marketing Cloud and try it out for ourselves. So over in Marketing Cloud, I built myself a cloud page with a lookup to a content block, which I can now use to publish my code into and test really quickly. So I have now got my copied code from the W3Schools and I can paste it into my server-side JavaScript function block here. Now a few things to check first is that we do have this iteration that we can print through but we have to make a few alterations to make this work in server-side JavaScript. So to start with, let's declare a variable of i, which is going to start at zero. Now this means that when we go through and iterate this text, we actually want to not set a value of text, we actually want to write this out. We can do this by using the platform response write function going to write out a string plus the variable and then end. Then we'll increment and we'll do while the i is still less than 10. Also going to add a line break onto the end here just to make sure we do separate this out so it's cleaner to view on our page. Now one thing to be aware of before we start to save and run this is that the do while loop will execute until the function turns a false. Now obviously this is okay while our while loop is checking the value of i starting at zero and going up until it's less than 10. If I was to change this to a, you know, much, much larger number, we could definitely crash some servers or at least error out the page. So let's try to not do that and play things safe. With this done, let's save it and run it to make sure it works. Jump onto my cloud page and go refresh and there we go. The number is 0 through 9, 9 being less than 10. Once we are less than 10 continue, as soon as we are no longer less than 10, we are going to escape. Now the reason it did that it printed out this number is nine and then it incremented to 10 and then tested to see if it was 10. Let's see what happens if I change the i function here and put it on the top. i plus plus of course means to add one to this value. I could have said variable of i equals i plus one, but i plus plus is the JavaScript notation to make that shorter. So now it's going to increment before it prints. So now it starts at zero it'll increment and print out one as the first value. It started at zero and went to nine. Now it's gonna start at one and go to 10 because we changed the location of this incrementation. So let's try that, we'll go refresh. And sure enough, one through 10, there we go. Now to show you how powerful the do while loop can be, it allows you to do some programmatic code inside of your functions to test something until it meets a true condition and then stop the cycle. So for example, I want to print out all the numbers that sum as they go until my sum is equal to a thousand. So if I start at zero and I said I'm going to add i, so if I add i and then I'm going to add i equals, I'm going to print out a sum total. So if I start i as this and var s for sum also starts at zero, then what I'll do is I'll say uh, var s is equal to s plus i. I'm going to add i to s each time. So that's how we keep incrementing it all the way along. 
uh, and that way it's going to be my sum total of i. So if I start at zero, it's going to then increment by one, which gives me one. It's then going to add one to zero, which gives me one. So one plus, actually I should probably do it down here. Do the sum down there, there we are. So one plus s equals, and then s. Actually, I will have to break that. One plus s equals, break that there, then do my math, print, and then put the result. There we are, equals s. There we are, just like that. And so the reason for that is, I've now changed the value of s in between my use of s there and my use of s here. So start again, we are starting from zero. My sum is zero. It goes into my do uh, while function here, it adds one to i, so now it's one. So adding one to zero should be equal to, well, we're now gonna add that one to zero, value of s, which is now equal to s, which should be equal to one. Then goes back to the top. Now we've got one and one, so adding one again, adding two to one should equal three, and so on and so forth. It's gonna keep incrementing and adding, it's going compounding, until we hit a certain number. I want that number to be 100. So keep going until s equals 100. How many numbers do we add together until we get to 100? Well, let's find out. We'll go save and let's have a look. Aha. Uh -huh. So I got my little adding function wrong. There was only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 iterations until we surpassed 100. Okay, that was handy. That was good to know. So I didn't know it was gonna be 14 iterations, but by doing some simple math, it would calculate this for us and then escape that function as soon as it was met as true. I just realized by the way that the reason it wasn't showing correctly was because I did have these two numbers adding together. If I in fact added in a plus as text into my string value here, we get the correct value. If I saved that and reran it, this was the output that I got. So we can now see if we add zero and one, we get one. If we get two and one, we get three, three and three is six, four and six and so on. And we keep building and building and building until we get to that 14th iteration, which is now above 100, therefore ejecting it from that while loop. One of those weird things when it comes to JavaScript is that it does uh, play funny when you have numbers and strings being concatenated or added together. But we now have that do while function adding up correctly, which means you can now see how many iterations it takes until we get to the sum of 100. Now again, a useful use case for this could be something like you don't know how many iterations to do until a certain outcome is reached. Now my example was to make it to 100. It could be for purchases to make it to loyalty points. It could be for sectors until you get your flight status. It could be events until the event block is completed. And one of my favorite use cases of the do while loop is exactly that. It's actually list and event structures inside of your emails. So for example, if you had a list of upcoming events hosted by your company or of an interest in your region, you can do a do while lookup to look up all the events, return them all back until a certain number of events have been returned. For example, a common email block to use is a one by three product grouping which means you want to have three products. So keep cycling through the events until you find three that are in your region. So there you have it, a quick introduction to the do while loop in server-side JavaScript, allowing you to create your own dynamic looping code blocks inside of your emails, landing pages, and server-side JavaScript automation activities. Hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you have, then please let me know in the comments with a big thumbs up on the video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you can be notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud content.